it wasn't that close as I thought it would be. We do have the Dom Perignon Unotheque from 96, huge vintage. And then uh, we do have the 2002 following big vintage, big, big vintage of the Crook Clou de Menil, Blanc de Blanc. And yeah, so as I said, we're talking benchmark champagne. Um, we have this bottle, which is like 500 euro. And we do have this bottle, which is like 1000 euro upstairs. Uh, depending on um, yeah, if you get it, uh, where you get it and stuff. We did have two perfect bottles in this, two, two times perfect shape. And yeah, what can I say? Um, the, yeah, when you, when you choose which was better, um, I think it was like 55% for the cook and uh, 45 for the, uh, for the Dom Perignon. Um, I loved both, of course. Um, and now the question is, which was bigger uh, to me? Um, it was by far the Cook Clou de Menil. Um, no question. Um, even though I'm a big fan of Dom Perignon, as you know. But um, it was because like, it was a different level, just a different level. And um, so let's start. And um, as we said, we have both vintages. Of course, we have not comparable because it's not both 96 or both is 2002. But um, we do have the big, big vintages. And um, yes, the Enotique in this case, it was, yeah, it was a very rich style like Dom Perignon, very rich, juicy. Um, the, the nose is really, really ripe, um, but lovely ripe. So you have a lot of um, ripe um, pineapple, you love some, some honey, some caramel, and totally, totally rich stuff. Yeah, really, really rich stuff. And I really, really like it. Um, on the palate, is, uh, the acidity is very, very great, great structure, really young on the palate. Um, so you wouldn't guess it's 96 um, if you get it blind, I think. So I wouldn't do it, so maybe you would. But to me, it's really, really young on the palate. Um, great finish, long finish. Um, and yeah, so rich, some bolder um, kind of, of champagne. And um, we have both. We drank uh, both um, bottles over two days, so we can check if it if it um, developed or does not. Um, and then we go for for this one. As I said, it's really really expensive, and um, I'm very happy I had the chance to to drink one. And um, yeah, Cook Clou de Menil 2002. And um, as you may know, uh, the Maison Cook, which is very very small, both. Both, by the way, both belong to um, Louis Vuitton and White Tennessee, so LVMH. And um, there are a lot of bottles produced, not from, from this one, but uh, in general, Dom Perignon is producing a lot of stuff on a very high level. That's what I like about Dom Perignon. And then we do have a Cook, which is a Maison, but really, really small in terms of production and also in terms of, of hectare. And so, yes, the Claude Menil was like destroying everything you know about champagne. If you have it for the first time, it's like, boom, really, 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 really serious stuff. Yeah, and um, we opened it one hour before before drinking, before serving, and um, it was re a really, really mind-blowing experience. We enjoyed it over um, three hours uh, in the evening and then let it rest for, for one day and then we had the, the another rest like this. And yeah so let's start with the yeah the first class um, i just released a article on my my blog about the clou de menil 2002 and so it's really exciting it's really developing in the first two or three hours uh, the first first nose is full of full of citrus and full of brioche and some oxidate uh, oxidation and uh, very crook style and then on the palette it's like um very very clean precise f refreshing um even though if you keep in mind it's like 2002 it's a lot of years ago um the the the, the grapes are from 2002 so 18 years old and um then on the palette as i said the acidity is really really striking 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 and then you get it on the palette you you finish it and you have it on the palette or in the mouth the mouth feeling and the finish like three or four minutes yeah, and uh, it's absolutely crazy time what they did here. And um, 
really I was really really flashed and, and blown away yes so and then you had the second or third nose and the third, uh, third glass of, of the cook uh, Claude Menil and um, it was really really developing so then you had some some um, wet stones uh, we have some, some chalk, um, we have some lemon tart, so the citrus, the fresh citrus went to the, some lemon tart. Um, we had some licorice later. Um, what do we have more? Uh, we had some... Um, bu -bu -bu -bup -bup -bup. Let me check. We do have some... Um, yeah, first we had some, some green apple, then we had some, like a bucket of apples, some green apples, some gr yellow apples, some red apple. Um, then it was, was really exciting, what came a bit later to this. Um, then we had, of course, oh, yes, we had a lot of uh, white peach, a lot of white peach, um, very, very juicy, ripe white peach. Um, um, we, have, so we had some orange zest, and uh, what was really, what I really loved was the, the second up from the second glass so after like one hour um we took we took a sip and the first when it entered the the tongue the tongue the first sip was like a junmai daiginjo so like sake very elegant precise fine sake and um, i was really like smiling because i wasn't expecting this and um, for like two hour of one and a half hours um the first with your entry, the entry on the palate was like uh, like this Junmai Daiginjo sake, and it was really really nice. Uh, and then it went away, and um, yeah, it was really developing over the first night. Um, on the second night was um, the wine was more more whiny, more more uh, seems to be more ripe, even though the the, the Perlage was still very very great and fine. And um, still, the finish never had a champagne, which is uh, which was like that that long. So really, it's like it's but you had you had it, and it's four minutes ago, and you still have this this taste, this saltiness, this minerality, and um, some some spicy notes too. And this was absolutely freaking stunning. And uh, yeah, so. If you have the chance to taste these, of course, both, of course, um, you need to try this stuff. Or sometimes if you're in London or if you're in uh, Barcelona or one of these big cities, uh, Paris maybe too, after Corona, um, there are some bars which have very heavy champagnes by the glass and maybe you have the chance to, to try a glass because the bottle is just too expensive, I think. Um, not too expensive for this product, but too expensive for me to, to pay it, to buy it, so to drink it more and more often. Um, but you need to try this. And um, yeah, so it was kind of difficult to have these two beside because it's totally different style. And so um, if you would have tried them like this, yeah, and the first night or one night, one or, first, one or two nights you drink this beauty, um, it by for itself it's a huge 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 champagne but if you have something like this beside it gets difficult and um yeah i uh, i'm really still i'm still um flashed and um wowed by by this experience um, i'm very happy that we can retaste this one um we have two bottles left of the Unotec 96 um, I just reordered one um, because we have two different bottles and we have two different disgorgement dates. Um, one is from 2008 and one is from 2014, like this one. And so we do have the chance in the near future to to retry them and to to yeah send them side by side, the 2008 disgorgement and the 2014. And um, we won't uh, have this one in the same same tasting because uh, it would uh, yeah irritate the the palate the nose and the whole experience and so yes of course it was an absolutely stunning experience to have them side by side but um maybe not the the cleverest the most clever uh idea but sometimes uh yeah life stuff uh, you know what it is um yes so um i'm not really sure how many bottles of the let me check. No, um, how many bottles of this one are produced? Of course, not that money, uh, not that, not that much. 
Um, from this one, I think there are 13,000 bottles. Yes, we do have 13,278 and 500 Magnums. I think this one from the Magnum, crazy time. And um, so, yes. Another thing is some people ask me, um, how's the drinking window or how it's in shape right now, if you can keep it more longer or if you should drink it now. Um, so for, for this one, I think it can last for a lot of more years, like five years, six, seven, eight years. And this can last forever. Like with this acidity, um, it can last like, I would say, no problem 2030, no problem 2035, no problem 2040, um, maybe up to 2050. So this is like everlasting um, and eternal and so good. And yes, crazy time, crazy times. Thank you very much. Um, I just retasted this one. We had some some left from yesterday, like this. And um, as you, you just might need to think about it, it's a '96 vintage, and we opened it yesterday at yeah, like 24 hours ago, and um, we had it open the whole time until 10 in the evening, and then we closed it, kept it kept it cool, and then um, opened it yeah one and a half hours ago. And uh, it was still fresh. There was still pelage, and it was still so so yummy on the pellet. No oxidation, nothing um, for a wine which is um, yeah f with grapes made from '96, and it's really impressive. So don't misunderstand me. This is freaking top notch in both ways. Um, but if you're talking, which is um, the the bigger one, it's like this. Um, of course, Dompi has some more to offer which is the uh, P3. Um, I think P3, um, the actual vintage is 96, not sure. Guys, LVMH, not sure. Um, but this is going to be um, even more expensive than this one. I think it's like 1,500, 1, 1,800, 2,000 maybe, depending on where you get it and what's the source. But um, I had it sometimes, the P3, and it's not comparable with this one, maybe in terms of price, but not in terms of, of taste, because um, it's very, very, the, the P, the Dom Perignon, we have the P1, which is the, the standard label, um, which is great. Uh, you have the P2, and then you have the P3. Um, they rearranged this whole um, thing years ago, some years ago, and, um, the P3 is the, the more P's, P1, P2, P3. Um, so P2 is even more whiny and more, um, yeah, set it down than the, the P1. And then you have the P3, which is like, um, like wine. And of course it's champagne, but it doesn't have that much in common with, with the champagne you have in your, in your, um, in your mind. And, uh, yes. So very excited, um, uh, for, for another bottle. And um, next week I have the chance to, to um, have a video call with uh, Olivier Krug and also with the new uh, lady from in, which is um, in charge for the seller, on duty for the seller. And uh, we are going to taste the new um, 168 edition of the Krug Grand Cuvée. And i um, very excited for this experience. I think it's next Friday. Um, 28th, I think, yes. And I will keep you updated. And um, yeah, if you like to get more of these streams with reviews and stuff, um, give me a message. Um, I will re maybe I will upload it on YouTube, just um, that it wasn't um, just done after 24 hours. Um, send me your, your, your new or uh, your messages, uh, what you think about these two bottles. Um, if you had some of them, I had some messages from some guys which had the um, Claude Medeal from older vintages, what is really, really exciting. Also for this one. Um, so if you have, if you drank it, uh, drank it, or if you um, have one in the cellar or whatever, um, write me a message and um, stay safe, stay, stay, stay clean, no Corona. Um, have a good weekend and see you guys. Cheers.